Hello everyone, welcome back to another watercolor tutorial. Today is all about watercolor reflections. And I hope this is very easy for you, trying to keep in mind someone who's just starting out, not been painting landscapes. I feel that these are pretty simple. As always, the materials and the colors and everything that I use is in the description below. I am using, for both of these paintings, a wet on wet technique, and that means that I wet the paper before I apply any paint. I do this because it's going to help soften the paint and it's going to help them move around and have some nice blends. So I fully wet my paper and then I drop in some blue, and when it comes to reflections, when I do something to the top, for instance the sky, I'm going to do the same for the bottom, which is going to mimic water. Now, I have taken a wet sponge here and decided to play around to see what I could get as far as some texture in the sky. I ended up not liking the streaks and then I went ahead and dabbed away some of the paint to mimic some clouds and then I did the same thing in the bottom. And I will also darken up the bottom a little bit more because the watercolors will dry a little bit lighter. So you can see that I'm doing that here. And I really wanted to have the reflections mimic what I did in the top part of the painting because I really wanted to show that the water was semi-smooth to where you could actually see the texture in the sky. I'm re-wetting uh, the middle part of my paper because I'm going to drop in some land. And for my land, I am using a brown and a black just to make it a big a bit darker but of course if you want the specific colors then go ahead and look at the description I'm using this flat brush because well because I don't use it that often and I thought why not <laughs> and I like it it's fun you can grit, get some nice uh, lines with it uh, vertical lines or horizontal lines now I am going to take that land and drag it all the way to the left and make it thicker on the right. So now I am focusing on brown right now, but if I could redo it, and maybe you might want to do it for your own painting, is I wish I would have dropped in another color. I am using a bit more of some warm brown and a bit of a darker, cooler brown, but if you were to have added maybe some purple or even some green, that would look quite nice too. Or you can also really warm it up and make some orange-yellow tones. But I stuck with brown, and it still looks nice, but if you want to add a little bit of something extra, then I would uh, try adding in another color. You can also tilt your paper like I did here and spray it. That's going to help uh, make the paint uh, move upward. And as far as what I'm doing here, I'm doing a bunch of lines. I wasn't sure at this point if I was going to have them be trees, bushes, shrubs. So I suppose it's a combination of both. And you'll see uh, what I do a little bit later. But once you soften your edges and get the lines and add in more darker shades how you want it then you're going to go ahead and let that sit if you are painting along with me because now i'm moving on to my second painting and i am wetting my entire paper again and once i do that then i pick a shade of blue now the blues that i really like when it comes to water or sky um, i really like of course Payne's Gray, which is what I've decided to use here. Now I did have a little bit of cobalt left on um, my palette, so that may have slipped in, but sometimes that's the beauty of not cleaning your palette, is that you might get some really beautiful colors mixed in there. And what I do to the top, I do to the bottom. So now this one, I decided to just take my brush and gently move the paper from right to left because now I am taking some green and doing a similar thing that I did to the top one using a different color, but this time I am going to, instead of 
going from all the way to the left, all the way to the right, I'm going to split the paper. So I make one land formation here by adding in light values of green with darker values on top of it. And I stop in the middle and then I go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Now I wanted my land to be a bit um, thicker and fuller towards the edge of the paper and to get thinner. I did go all the way to the end, but I end up softening uh, the left hand side and having it a bit mistier. Because the water is going to be from the base of the page and it's going to wrap around that bottom left hand piece of land. So that's what I ended up doing. This is what happens when you're not quite sure what you plan on doing with your paintings, but that's okay. You can change it up, especially if you really, if you start quite light. Yes. And I am continuing to add some darker values of paint. I wanted to make this a bit cooler uh, today and normally I will add red to my greens. You can add purple to your greens, which is quite beautiful, but today I stuck with some sap green, and to darken it up, I added a little bit of perylene green. That's kind of a funny combination, but because I love green so much, I really enjoy mixing all of my greens <laughs> together. In versus having another color to either make a green or to change the hue of a green. I also did some lines here like we did to the top. Now these are definitely going to be pine trees and the paper is still quite wet so those uh, lines will become soft and what I do to the top, again, I'm going to do to the bottom because these are reflections. Now it's easier to do this if your paper's wet and you can also continue to mist your paper. Now you don't wanna mist it too often uh, because it could make your paint run and unless you want that. By all means, give that a go and see if you like it because you never know what kind of style you're going to like. So I'll never tell you on this channel that you should not do something because I think that could be not so good. <laughs> um, you want to be able to experiment and see what you like and you might actually enjoy the paint running and the very dramatic fuzziness of watercolor. I am adding more of the blue and what I did to the top I'm doing to the bottom and you can see now the water forming a bit more and you'll see that the water fades into the middle of the paper. Now go ahead and let that sit because we're going to go back to the top painting and I'm making mixing up some black here to create my mountains. If you have not seen my two latest mountain watercolor tutorials, then I have linked them in the description below, but I show you how I do this type of mountain. Now I do apologize for the lack of focus here. I had some issues with my overhead camera mount and it kind of broke <laughs> so I had to do these very strange side angles and it did not focus but it will get into focus shortly I promise <laughs> um, anyway but if you haven't seen those videos be sure to check them out these are my favorite way to paint mountains and I think they are so easy and really you can't mess them up because mountains can be a bit tricky and sometimes intimidating, but I think this way and these techniques that I use, which um, I, I think honestly are very easy. <laughs> so uh, be sure to check those out. So yep, I use the gray and I gently fade it out just by adding some more water and I fade it right into that brown. And then you can go over your mountains with more of a dry texture with a darker shade. And now it's time to add in some trees on the left hand side. I decided that I wanted to soften that brown with some green and then I add more water 
and if it does not blend as well as you want it to then you can always add more water to those edges and you can use a paper towel to dam to lift some of the paint away now the paper is still wet so you can see that green is gently fading and then I decided to try something different here where I am using the side of my brush and I am gently pushing that paint up and it's giving a very soft, uh, soft, um, what am I trying to say? Very soft edge to the trees. And I decided to do that to where it meets the brown. And of course, always misting my paper and dropping in some more green. Now I'm also keeping in mind that these are reflections so uh, I will do that to the bottom as well. But you can see what I mean here as far as having the brown on the right and green on the left. I don't think it looks terrible but it could have been better. But I wanted to share this video anyway because I do think the two landscapes are nice and I and I feel that it would be nice to do as a beginner but you can play around with your color choice and then I decided maybe I'd add some green here but you can see it didn't work out so well but that's okay I take my blender brush and decided to blend it and soften it a bit more and to push that green up just to have it uh, be a bit softer so I think at this stage it looks a little bit better now the paper is a bit dry here so I wish I would have uh, sprayed the paper down but I forgot and that's okay um, but you can see that I am now pushing that brown up and down to create uh, those reflections And then I continue to do that till I meet the middle. Taking a bit more green. Again, I thought it was too brown and I wanted to soften it up. This is a fun brush. Let me know if you tried this brush. Uh, it's the Velvet Touch uh, Blender brush, very small brush. And it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. All right, so I'm going ahead and now adding my trees. Now I have a few tutorials on how I achieve these pine trees, so I'll link those down below as well. And they're quite easy, a little bit of a dry brush uh, style of tree uh, with some, of course, uh, lots of water, if that makes any sense. <laughs> And you can feel free to add as many or as little trees as you want. Now I have not focused on the reflections yet. I'm mainly uh, focusing on those top trees, but I will mimic the top ones to the bottom ones. Now you can see here that I am uh, doing those ones. Now the reflections in the water can be very sloppy. It doesn't really matter. Um, you can spray the paper and have them even softer. It's really up to you because remember water is messy and it's not always perfectly smooth unless you're a photographer and you take those really beautiful um, uh, long exposure shots where it is glass like which you could paint that way I decided to drop in some more darker um, values of paint and now I'm working on the sky I wet my paper and then dropped in some blue and then of course removing some of that blue with a paper towel to create some uh, clouds and then to pull some of those trees in that I forgot to record, I'm sorry, um, with some of the reflections and then I wanted to soften it. So I added some more water and then taking my paper towel, I did lift some up. Going back to my bottom painting now, 
and I am adding in some more detail uh, trees. And I will continue to uh, do that for the entire painting on this bottom one. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up the footage a little bit. Working on the water now, I am adding some of the same blue and you can form the water with just a bunch of lines or you can think about them as little mountains. I know I've heard that somewhere, but it's a great way to describe water, I say. And yeah, that's what you can do. You can have a, um, my brush is quite wet, but then I do slowly let it dry. So you can see as I work my way to the top, it gets softer and you can almost see the bristles separating to where you see that dry texture. And I do add in darker values. I want to add in my darker paint over the top of the wet paint so it spreads, but then also some drier areas to give more texture because I love texture in water and now this water is not as smooth as the top uh, painting because I wanted to show that you can create different looks now I do add that blue paint into that green don't be afraid to touch your 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 paint that you've already laid down now you don't want to scrub it because that would um, possibly uh, move that paint around unless you want to try that out then by all means but if you want it to sit tight then I would go ahead and gently go over it and I'm misting my paper of course because I want those um, those those little uh, separation of the water but that is it everyone I hope that you enjoyed this be sure to like and subscribe I hope you found some value out of this video and I look forward to seeing you in my next one. And be sure to watch those uh, videos in the description below on mountains and pine trees. All right, take care, my friends. Bye.